are going to learn about quantum computers today. Uh, my name is Eneko Aspe. I'm the uh, Sales Enablement Manager at Sandbox AQ. And today we have Stefan like an hour with us. He is a physicist and the VP of Engineering at Sandbox AQ. Hello, Stefan. Hello, Eneko. This is the uh, last section of this training. Uh, we call it post-quantum world. Um, first of all, uh, we want to understand what will it look like in the future to use a quantum computer? Because, Stefan, I believe that uh, I won't have uh, more likely a quantum computer laptop. I won't have a quantum device in my home. However, I will connect somehow to a quantum computer that is in the cloud uh, through a uh, secure communication. Uh, so we will have like in the cloud, like a distributed quantum computer, right? Is that correct? That's how we will connect to quantum computers when we need them. Yeah, that's at least how people envision that it will work today. I mean, a quantum computer, especially one that's large enough to do something really interesting and really powerful, it's not going to be the kind of thing that fits in a laptop, first of all. It's going to have, it's going to be very large and you're not going to want to use it all the time. You're only going to want to use it when there's a quantum problem to solve. Mm -hmm. When right? we because have a very large and very complex problem. Exactly, exactly. And maintaining the quantum computer is going to be a big task. And it's probably going to have to happen in a particular, you know, in a special facility like a quantum data center. And uh, accessing these quantum computers, there's no reason why it can't be done through the cloud. So it should be done through the cloud. Not everybody needs to own a quantum computer, certainly not individuals. And even most, um, most enterprises and other organizations probably don't need their own quantum computer. They can just access it when they want to. This is also the way that class classical computing is also moving in a direction to follow this model as well, right? More and more ordinary classical computing resources are in the cloud for the same reasons, because you want to have, say, elastic use of the, of the computing resources. You don't want to have all this compute power sitting around if you're not going to use it. You just use it kind of on demand. And quantum computers can follow a similar way. There's actually, even in these early days of quantum computing, you can access um, quantum computers online through different through cloud services these days. Huh. Um, that's cool. That's right. And play around with small quantum computers at least. But the same model should work uh, even into the future. Wow, amazing. Uh, and finally, um, quantum internet. Um, so quantum states uh, cannot be transmitted over the uh, standard internet. So people are already uh, talking about this. We will need a quantum internet in the future. What is exactly quantum internet? Yeah, so the problem is that, you know, as we've talked about many times now, the quantum states, the quantum nature of things is very fragile, right? And it's easy to destroy it. And so if you try to send a signal down the normal internet through the normal wires and the normal boxes, and even if it started out as a quantum signal, the all of the different nodes that it would have to pass through to get from my computer to your computer, even if they were quantum computers, it would just destroy the coherence. You would lose the quantum nature of it right away. And so you need to have special, special boxes, special routers, special nodes, special repeaters that are... Uh, able to handle and transmit quantum signals. And that's how you would be able to connect two quantum computers to together, say, that are very distant to do some kind of distributed quantum processing. A smaller version of the same kind of idea could even be used to connect two quantum computers in the same room, right? If you had a quantum computer on one side of the room and a quantum computer on the other side of the room, and you wanted to connect them, maybe instead of calling that quantum internet, we should call it just quantum networking. Uh, you would use the same kinds of ideas to do that kind of connection. And that's actually probably how a very large quantum computer can effectively be built out of several smaller quantum computers by doing this kind of quantum networking. <laughs> um, with this, I hope uh, you all uh, learned about quantum computers 
uh, thank you so much uh, to, to, to get this training. Uh, if you have any other questions, please send us an email to info at sandboxquantum.com. Uh, we will be happy to answer all your comments and questions. Uh, thank you so much, Stefan, for all the information. And we will have you here in future trainings, hopefully. Yeah, yeah, no, this was fun. Thank you. Thank you.